Hi, good evening everybody. My name is Cameron, and I hope your Wednesday is going wonderfully so far. My week has been pretty good so far. A rather chilly one indeed. So chilly that a week ago, I decided to order myself some boots. I am not the kind of person who will very often make large purchases for myself alone. Usually whenever I spend like a larger sum of money, it's gonna wind up going towards a family member or a friend or something that falls on the list of priorities. We've talked about it. There's family at the top, there's friends, and then there's fun. Fun usually comes at the bottom. Fun is usually like a selfish thing and that's like the lowest tier of the priority list. So I don't wind up spending a lot of money on myself for anything other than what's on the top two parts of the list. Hello Lorelai, how folks been? good so far um i was saying how i was i bought something that uh, for a higher sum of money for myself the other day i spent about 200 dollars on a nice pair of boots because it's cold outside and every once in a while about once or twice a week i wind up walking back from or to work and it's it's a hefty bit of a walk it's about a 35 to 40 minute walk away usually about a 15 minute bike ride the bike ride's not really a bit of a problem because as you know you know as i'm as i'm cycling and i'm getting my way towards work i build up some body heat and whatnot so i can keep warm pretty well on my own but when i'm walking i don't build up enough heat to keep the extremities of my body very warm i wear two jackets actually if i throw this thing out of the way it's gonna be a big noise for a second don't worry about that i usually wear two jackets to work and a scarf. I've got the inner jacket. It's got a nice blue plaid on it. And then I got the outer jacket, which has a really, really demented little monogram on it. Something that my fiance put on there for me a little while ago. But I wear these two jackets to work because it's cold outside and it's a little cold inside. Nice indeed. I hope they serve me long and well. They will when they get here. As it turns out, I have very small tootsies. I have very small feet. I'm a very small man. I'm only about almost 5'6 in stature. So I wound up getting shoes according to the size that are on the little tongue of the shoes that I currently have. And according to the shoes I currently have, I'm a size 7.5 American male shoe size. And so when I bought these boots from L.L. Bean, they say if you wear like light socks for the most part, which I do, light socks with a bunch of little, with uh, some things on them, they, um... They say to size down. If you're somewhere in the middle, like at the half mark, you should size down. If you wear like thick socks, then you should size up. Doing the math for a little bit. Seven and a half rounded down is seven. And lo and behold, the smallest size boot that they had in a men's size was a seven. So I was like, perfect. I'm going to wind up buying these boots for myself. They're a little spency, but I got them 10% off because what LL Bean does is they give you 10% off on whatever you buy if you sign up for their mailing list. So naturally, I did what any sane person in the 21st century would do, and I put in my email, subscribed to their mailing list, got my 10% off, and then immediately unsubscribed from it, except for the necessary like track uh, the tracking of the shipment details and whatnot, because I want to know when my package is going to get here. And it came the other day, and I was like, oh boy, my toes are not going to be so cold anymore in the walks to work, especially when it gets a little rainy outside and whatnot. That's not fun. Not fun at all. I have a big umbrella to shield my feet in front of me as I walk through the rain from the water, but I step in puddles. It's not pleasant. But in any case, I got them and I put them on my feet and I was like, you're kidding me. There was too much space in front of my toes. My feet was, my foot was moving around like, like, like the liquid in this container. Like there was a lot of room for this liquid in this container to move around. That was my foot in those shoes. The smallest size men's shoes that they have <laughs> were too big for my feet. And so I'm like, I gotta return something that I bought online that's so annoying. But luckily, I guess this must happen pretty often for L.L. Bean because inside of the box that I got my boots in, the, the boots that were too small, there was a piece of paper that had three parts on it. The top was, for your records, a record of your purchase. The next part was, on one side, you could fill out details to purchase an additional item because you loved the boots so much, or if you flip it around, it would be details of the exchange that you will be making because there was some one of six reasons wrong and they all had different codes on there for what is most wrong with your purchase one was like it was too large one was too short mine was the too large there was defects d discoloration yada 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 and then on the very bottom is this return label that you can slap back on the box and deliver to ups and whatnot and so i was like the, the examples they give for different types of exchanges are like you can say you got the wrong color, put a different color on there. You got the wrong size, put, put another size on there. And me, knowing that I just bought the smallest man's boot size that they had, was like, if I fill this out incorrectly, I'm not going to get my boots. I'm not going to get my boots properly. So I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> Online clothes are in such a gamble with sizes, even if you measure everything right. And I did. I tried. 
to measure everything according to their size charts and whatnot. I followed their orders to the T, but to be fair, they didn't give very accurate, very throw like sizing information, so it's bound that people fall through the cracks somewhere. So bound that they have they uh, they put in the exchange form inside the box in case like you were mis dissatisfied with your with your purchase, which I kinda was, but like, was it my fault? I don't really know. So anyway, I called up LL Bean and was on the phone with a lovely person who totally understood where I was coming from. She was like, yeah, um, you said that's the lowest size that you got. We'll look into women's sizes for you. And I'd already chosen for myself that I think for the sizing that I experienced to this boot was if I ordered the men's seven, that if I ordered the women's eight, then I should be just fine. But we had a little bit of a back and forth that was on hold for a little bit. She pulled up whatever internal sizing chart they had. And I was confirmed that I should probably get a women's size eight boot from LL Bean. So I was like, all right, I'm glad that I filled this out correctly. I put it in my box. I'm going to take it to the post office. It took about a week for the boot to get here, and it should get, take about three to four weeks for the exchange to get here, which is a month longer than I thought I was going to be waiting for boots. But you know what? I spend good money on the boots. I, I, I want to I wanna make sure these boots last for a long time, long time boots, so my feet are warm, potentially, for years to come. So hopefully that will wind up doing so for me. They keep me all nice and warm. I'm very cold. My extremities are always cold. My fingers are cold. I have gloves. I, I wear shoes and socks, sometimes two socks at a time, and long johns beneath, and my toes are still cold. I wear two jackets, thick jackets, and a scarf, and an undershirt, and, and a shirt, and, a, and an undershirt. I have an undershirt on here, an additional layer. Still cold sometimes, but alas, different bodies function different ways in this world. I also have a coworker who's usually always cold, and I have two other coworkers who are usually always hot. So it's a bit of a, and we're all in the same office. So it's like, what do you do? So whenever the sun comes in, I pull down the blind, I pull up the blinds so that the sun is shining right on me. And I was really basking the sunlight today as I sat at my desk doing my firmware work. It was delightful. I apparently was enjoying myself so much that somebody decided to like, take a little Snapchat. Like, you look like you're having a lot of fun there. Like I was, I was having a lot of fun as I sat there just basking in the sunlight definitely doing work. I was most definitely doing work. But in any case, other things in life that happen to warm me up is a nice warm cup of drink. What drink? Tea, coffee, hot chocolate, anything else that's warm. And so I, over the course of the, the cold, cold winter, I have had a craving for things that I usually can't, I usually don't drink a lot of coffee during this time of the year. I think I have like a seasonal gastro into whatever thing going on where if I drink too much acidity things with acidity in it that I get a little get a little pain down here so I don't do coffee usually I've been drinking a lot of tea recently but I've had this craving for coffee and I'm not I'm not talking like like coffee like from Starbucks and whatnot that's got all that sugar stuff in it I'm looking more for like that deep dark bitter coffee flavor which according to a I think it was a Phoenix Wright meme I saw the other day is exactly how you're supposed to drink coffee black nothing in it as as the world intended to, I suppose. So I've been in the mood for something coffee forward. Not necessarily with all the chocolate notes and whatnot, as I would usually get from certain drinks out there, but oh, I am in it. Got it? Got it? Godot? Is that a character from Phoenix, right? I don't I don't know. I I wanna play those, those games eventually. Black is a moonless night. Oh yes. <gasps> it's my mom! Hey look, it's wait, I can point at her. Aha! That's my mother. You know what we do for mothers? To all the mothers in the house. We celebrate you. Love you, Mom. Heart there. Oh, there was a whole... Gender in clothes is more to define styles than anything deeper than that. Wish we could break some of these that scare off some folks from what they really need. Like, why I swear by going to men's segments for pants for the true pockets. The true pockets. I got... I got true pockets. I got I got true pockets. I can hold my phone in my pocket. I can hold my wallet in my pocket. I could probably hold this entire grapefruit in my pocket if I wanted to. Can, can I actually fit this in my pocket? Yes. Yes, I can. Can I... Can we, can we see that? Can we see that if I stand on top of my cooler? Look, I've got a grapefruit in my pocket. I do, there's the grapefruit. See, if I, if I can fit an entire grapefruit in my pocket, everybody who wears female pants should be able to at least fit their phone. That's, that's what I'm saying. But, but yeah, black as night, the coffee itself. I was in the mood for a coffee beverage. And in addition to that, the story that comes along the way so far, I, I do cocktails, I do very often. I have many, many cocktail books. And in those books are sometimes ingredients that I just don't have. Specialty liqueurs or specialty, uh, literally anything else, like things you gotta make it yourself or specialty liqueurs, I already said that already. But one of the ones that are on that list, and it's popped up in a couple of my books, is a chili liqueur. 
And when I heard chili liqueur, my immediate thought was chili, like chili pepper. No, 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 chili, like, like the country. And so the last time I went to my liquor store, I couldn't find the chili liqueur of my choice, which happens to be a brand called Ancho Reyes. And I just thought that my liquor store just didn't carry it because Pennsylvania is really weird. Pennsylvania and Philadelphia themselves are really, really weird with their, their import system. It's a whole, like, the distributor and the supplier and whatever else. It's like a three-tiered system and the government takes up like two-thirds of that, which is like, that's not a bad thing. It works for some places, but it, like, it really limits the options of liqueurs that I have. And lo and behold, I went to the store and I found... I found my Ancho Reyes! I was like, oh my god, I need to get this because so many, like, a, a good portion of the recipes that I have, thinking that I want to do, have this particular spirit in it. And I am very excited. Very excited indeed. The character, oh, going back to Phoenix Wright, the character is Got it? Got it? Maybe. The Tia Silent. Godot. Godot? Godot. Maybe Godot. I think, like, waiting for Godot, but game isn't, game isn't voiced, and your experience with the movies and anime is very limited. Same as I don't know much about Phoenix Wright. Although it's I think it's a deduction. It's a it's a law. You do law. I think it's a deduction type game. Sounds fun. Puzzles. I like puzzles. Love those puzzles. My Ancho Reyes chili liqueur. It says on the bottle. Let's put that up there for the poke the folks who can he I'm still figuring out the lighting stuff over here, but hopefully this is enough details for anybody who's curious at home of what we got over here. Ancho Reyes, Puebla, Mexico, 1927. Clásico liqueur, Mexico. Menure, please excuse my pronunciation, I, I do not speak Spanish. Menure, Menure de Ancho Reyes, Chile Ancho Liqueur, Marca Registrada. 40% alcohol, 750 milliliters, Heroica Puebla de Zaragoza. I like that. <laughs> I'm glad that I found it. I'm super glad that I found this. I took a little taste test of it the other day. It's got a spice to it. There's probably some other stuff going on in there, but I don't know too much about it. There's a poll like paragraph thing on the back, so. Let's go in there. It's imported by Campari America, New York, probably produced in, in Mexico. Of course it is. What do we got? Ancho Reyes is made from the beloved and unique chili ancho and inspired by a 1920s era recipe from the town of Puebla de Zaragoza, where we make Ancho Reyes today. Influenced by the old world liqueurs, Ancho Reyes is of the earth, evoking a sense of timelessness and expressing the essential flavors of Mexico. Enjoy the intriguing spice of Ancho Reyes meat on the rocks or mix to add heat to your margaritas and other favorite cocktails. For a spicy take on a classic margarita, combine one part Ancho Reyes with one part of your favorite tequila, three quarters part fresh lime juice, and one half part light agave nectar. Shake well with ice, strain into a double rocks glass over fresh ice, garnish with a lime wheel, and ooh, enjoy. That's not the recipe I'm making today. Actually, this is the first time I'm reading the back of the bottle, and I did not realize there was a recipe on there, but wow! I guess I'll have to, have to keep this a little while to make some margaritas. Excuse me while I go make some margaritas. Just kidding, not making any margaritas today. It's not anywhere close to a margarita. I don't even have any, I was gonna say I don't have any citrus. I've got the grapefruit. We already talked about the grapefruit, but I'm not using the grapefruit like that. It's um, actually, technically, between you and me, we're gonna call that an orange today. Just, we'll get there, we'll get there. Why does this bottle have a book introduction sleeve on the label? I respect their dedication. This is actually, the, this is not the first that I've seen things like that, I think. Uh, that one doesn't have like a whole thing on it. A lot of these liquors are like very, very full of themselves, or not, not in a bad way. They've got they've got pride. They got a lot of pride in them. And some of them have Old Forester's got a whole thing on the back. What was it? What was the other one I got today? Mount Gay also has a whole thing on the back. I think you know what? Today's the day that we read the back of the bottles. So as we get to them, we'll wind up doing that slowly but surely. But so, but so, anyways, I I've been looking for this baby for a while, and I wound up finding this baby, and now this baby is mine, and I will raise it. I will raise it like it was one of my own and use it in a cocktail and consume it, which is not necessarily what you want to do with your babies. But anyway, let's not worry about that for a little while. I was trying to look around to see what can combine the two flavors of Ancho Reyes chili liqueur and coffee, because I was in the mood for both of them. Because somehow the idea of like a like a spicy coffee wasn't totally out there to me. But I haven't played around with these flavors so much, so I haven't had a chance to play. So I figured I'd go to the internet and see what other people have gone on there. And lo and behold, I managed to find a recipe on a website called coffeecocktails.com, an Australian web link, .com slash au, an Australian link. Australian because it's a web website completely dedicated to a cocktail competition that Mr. Black, the creator of this coffee liqueur here, had put on in a means to, I guess, you know, sell more bottles, let the world know, like, Mr. Black exists and it's a good coffee liqueur made from, I want to say, 100%, mm, no, that's a different type. 
I think one of them is 100% Arabica coffee, but this one is not that. This one's just like whatever they put in their regular blend. It's actually got cinnamon on the bottom. It's made with real coffee. It's like, oh, I love that. Pretentious feels like the term, but not in a mean way. Yeah, like pretentious, like you put all the stuff on the back of the bottle. Like if it's a real story, dude, I respect that. But this, apparently some cocktail providers have, or liquor providers have been known to kind of stretch the truth a little bit on the on the narratives that they place on the back of their bottles. I don't know. If I can call you out on it, then cool, I'll take it. But I can't, I'm not a history buff, so I wouldn't really know even if it hit me in the face. I mean, Tito says it's handmade. Anna's absolutely right. It says up there, but what is handmade? There's no hands that touch that liquor. I mean, even if there was, it's distilled enough times that there ain't no bacteria they in there. None of it at all. It's handmade because they make it exactly the same every time. It's handmade, handmade because we do it every single time the same way. Does it involve hands? No. No? Whatever. Little as I know, me, Cameron, the AU meant alternate universe all along. Dude, maybe this is the alternate universe of cocktails, but I grabbed my recipe. From a person who decided to take their cocktail recipe, put it on the internet, and on the, whoa, speaking words, put it on the internet to compete in this coffee cocktail competition. I don't think it got any votes. I think the, the votes are all over, unfortunately. But for Jeremy Muir, the author, um, they created this drink called, oh my god, where is it? It's at the top. Nightfall on the Desert, combining Ancho Reyes chili liqueur, Mr. Black coffee liqueur, an aged rum, I don't actually have any aged rums, so I just grabbed the rum that I wanted to use, uh, and a rye whiskey. Uh, they said, let's see, the, the original creator of this cocktail recipe, which I will share on various different places, credit where credit is due, they used a Rittenhouse rye whiskey, a, the Mr. Black Cold Brew Liqueur, an Appleton Estate 12 aged rum, and Ancho Reyes Chili Liqueur, and a couple of different bitters and other fixins and whatnot. The Coffee Tail competition Coffee tail? Coffee tail? Coffee tail? Coffee cocktails. I like the coffee tail though. The portmanteau. That's how you pronounce it. Portmanteau? Portmantre? Portmanteau. I like those. I like, it's a pun. I, I'm a punny kind of guy. But so, I was so inspired by this that I figured, you know what? Let's go for it. So credit is credit, credit where credit is due. Jeremy Muir, I thank you for this one. Perhaps it'll allow me to better familiarize myself with the flavors of these liqueurs that we have here and potentially make a combination of my own one day. Ah! I'm looking forward to it. That, oh, we'll see why it didn't get any votes. Maybe maybe it's bad. I have no idea. We're about to find out. So this particular cocktail combination is built in a glass. But I haven't really done a built cocktail in ever? I don't I don't know if I've done... I, since the new setup over here, I don't think I've built a cocktail in a glass. Most of it wind up getting, winds up getting like shaken around and whatnot. But, you know, I'm not going to shake an open-topped container. If I shook it like this, if I shook it like this, like it's going to get everywhere. Also... I just noticed, because I put this thing up against my ear, that it sounds really, really funky now. Because <laughs> it's got a glass over top of it. Does this translate to the microphone? Does it sound weird now? I wonder if it sounds weird with the glass in front of it. I can't actually reach the microphone. It's way over there. But alas, 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 alas. So we're going to build this in our glass. I need a couple of ice cubes to start chilling things. So I'm going to grab a couple of ice cubes. going to head on down here. I'm going to grab my small ice cubes and just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know exactly how many ice cubes we need, but let's, let's put some ice cubes in there. Let's do it. Honestly, uh, I'm making, I'm making cocktail now. So let's, let's put on, let's put on close-up cam. That feels good. Close-up cam. You know what? I just noticed close-up cam, close-up cam. I am the cam, but I'm not, I'm not doing the close-up like this. Cause that's, I don't know, dog. I don't know. We're still, we're still working on camera angles, still working on things and whatnot. Eventually I'll be out of this apartment and maybe I'll have my own space. That'll be wonderful. And I won't have to worry about loud neighbors such as myself. I'm actually probably one of my loudest neighbors. Whoa, took this my ice cube. But alas, sounded normal? Sounded normal. Can't even get special effects on the show. She was, we're trying, we're trying our best this. Oh well, oh well. So, we're gonna build things in our glass here, and oh my god, I actually didn't grab an additional glass for me to put my coffee combination in. Let me see, do I have anything up there? One second, I'm gonna go grab another glass. I need it. I'm using the couch because I've locked myself in. But I got plenty of old-fashioned glasses. Oh, but where is the one that I can grab easiest? There is the one that, I don't like that glass. Oh, I want this glass. I'm gonna go with that one. Put things down, reorganize things later. Oh, it's beautiful. Don't worry, I'm coming back. Here I am. Here I am again, knocking everything off of my couch. Don't worry about it. Oh, grapefruit, don't fall. Don't fall, grapefruit. We don't want that, not at all. Oh, okay, I have this glass now. Let's just put that to the side. Cut, cut to this part where I didn't have to jump over the couch and whatnot. Instant replay, what? No, just kidding. 
All right, well, the first ingredient that goes into this one is an ounce of rye whiskey. My rye whiskey is Old Forester, which apparently has its own narrative on the back of it. Hey, my camtail setup succeeded in the overlay spun. Your effects work as far as I can tell. You have touched my heart, Lorelai, as you as you and everyone else always do. Thank you for that. We're trying around here. That I have my own critiques about everything else going on around here, but you know, yeah. let the bad thoughts go away. Take it easy. Shake it off. Take the edge off. Whatever you say. Camtail with an X. That kind of looks like the old ship name. Kind of does. The Camex tail. Cam, cam, camtail? Camtail? It's silence. It's all silent X's. Why would we do that? I don't know. It's cool. X is a cool, it's a cool letter of the alphabet. I need an ounce of... Oh, I need to read. I need to read the narrative. I forgot about that. Can't forget about Old Forester in 1940. My great-grandfather, Owsley Brown, acquired the Old Kentucky Distillery and along with it the Normandy Rye Whiskey brand after a 40-plus year absence. I am proud to reintroduce this historic rye whiskey recipe with which features our proprietary yeast, along with a mash bill of 65% rye, 20% malted barley, and 15% corn, creating a unique, spicy, and floral member of the Old Forester family. Signed, Campbell P. Brown, president of Old Forester, and signed, accordingly, by, by Sir Brown themselves. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I need an ounce of this rye whiskey. This was actually gifted to me by a pal of mine. Oh, you know what? I didn't grab my measuring device either. Ugh. You know, I have on my list of things that I want to get a little container so I can move my cocktail stuff around with me with ease. So instead of having to carry over the ingredients individually, I will merely carry them over as a group and not have to worry about climbing over my couch every time when I forget things. There is only one, there are only two rooms in this apartment. Technically three if you include the bathroom. This is the desk and the kitchen and the dining room and the living room. I'm currently sitting standing in what I call my living room. And, and that's the street. The street is out there. How's Philly doing tonight? Philly's doing just fine. Philly is sleeping softly tonight. Just kidding. Not while there's alcohol on the table. I need a single ounce, finally, of Old Forester rye whiskey or any other rye whiskey that you can find around or any whiskey that you can find. I don't know if it necessarily matters to stay exactly to the recipe on this one. I don't know how much Sir Jeremy had put into this drink, uh, how much effort and research and whatnot. This could be the perfect ratio. I have literally no idea, but I hope to find out. Maybe. Smells spicy. Smells like rye whiskey. Smells like rye whiskey. Looks like rye whiskey. Must be rye whiskey. According to, according to Old Forester, it absolutely is. What else have we got on here? We have a three quarters of an ounce of Mr. Black Cold Brew Liqueur. This is the Mr. Black. In Mr. Black Cold Brew Liqueur, I've had a couple times here. I like it. I, I saw a YouTuber personally recommend this one, and I was like, yeah, it sounds good to me. I like coffee. I like making cocktails. This seems like the one for me. It's not su it's not intensely sweet or like, like, they like sugar forward, kind of like a Kahlua or, oh, there's another one out there. I also have tried the Eka, the, what is it, Patron XO, which is also another it's a tequila based coffee liqueur. I haven't tried that one, so I don't know how it compares, but this is a semi sweet, mostly coffee bitter forward li liqueur. And I personally like it in my cocktails. I like it with coffee itself. You could put it in a little bit of milk, you could add a little bit of cream to it, you could. I don't know, add it to anything. You can add this with Coke. I, for one, like the taste of chocolate and Coca-Cola together, so if you're that kind of person, that kind of freak just like me, put some Mr. Black in your Coca-Cola. Why not? The world is your oyster, and if you like what's in the glass, then naturally, that's the right way to go. I need three quarters of an ounce of this. It smells lovely. Oh my god. I, I actually just got a flashback. I like... I know the memories, memories, something about where the memories are stored in the brain is close to where the processing for like your smells, your olfactory senses are. I don't know where it is, the topology of the brain, but supposedly they're really close by. So that's why like a smell can just bring you back to a moment. When I smell, when I smell the humid, the humid air, I'm whisked back to all the memories I have of me and my family on our family vacations down in South Carolina. I love those times. I smell like an apple cinnamon and I can smell like the 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 fan the the one the one oh my god ride it's not a ride it's a theater in Disney World where they spray the apple cinnamon on you oh my god I get taken back to those every single time and so this this particular smell reminds me a lot of the very very beginning of COVID in the very beginning of COVID I moved out of my uh, fraternity dormitory here at college and I went back to live with my parents because rather us all be together during the beginning of the pandemic 
and I kind of took up shop in my childhood room at the time, sat at my desk, and I one night I was like, I don't want to do any homework. I just want to relax. I just want to chill. I'm really stressed out right now. I was taking grad courses and taking undergrad courses at the same time and this whole pandemic thing. I was so stressed out of my mind. And so I decided to sit down, lay back, turn on a game called Valhalla. Wonderful game. It's a cyberpunk bartending action game. It's awesome. And I decided to just pour myself some of this. And this smell just brings me back to that moment of just sitting down, mood lighting on, relaxing, and just thinking like, it's me and what I'm doing to relax right now. And I don't need anything else in the world right now, so long as I can just be there present in the moment. It was, it's awesome. And actually, I didn't even realize I remember, I remember that so vividly, except for the fact that I just took a whip of the bottle and I was like, whoa, there I am. Oh, it was awesome. Cross the caffeine streams. Oh, cropsing them all. Figment's imagination station thing? No, 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 no. It's, the, it's in the Magic Kingdom. You sit there in a theater. I know Donald Duck like slams himself through a wall. I am completely blanking on what this one is called. Uh, it's not fantastic. It's, oh my God, I can't remember what it is. But alas, it's in the Magic Kingdom. It's right near Peter Pan. It's right near, it's right near the, 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 the Pharaoh's wheel. I'm completely blanking on what this is called. I'm sure somebody, somebody will come along and correct me. I, through the fact that I couldn't remember. I need three quarters of an ounce of this absolutely memorable liqueur, Mr. Black, or any coffee liqueur that you have. It doesn't have to be Mr. Black. Be whatever you want, whatever whatever floats your boat, whatever you got around. I'm improvising, so so should you if you got it. Was it called Railroad? It's near the Railroad. It's near the Railroad. I just I, uh, Philhar Magic. Oh my God, I remembered. It's it's the Philhar Magic. P H I L, right? H A R, Magic. That's the one. That's the one. Perfect vacation. Ah, it was it was the Philhar Magic. I remember what it was. That's the one. And they've got like the that's the one. Yeah. It's got like, they spray stuff on you. I don't know if they've been doing that during COVID time or not. I know Disney World is open, but they like spray a scent on you. They spray a scent on you and like, it's characteristic. Apparently, and my fiance is huge into Disney and you know, by proxy, I'm kind of into Disney too. I like that stuff, but supposedly there's there's a person out there. I don't know if it's like an independent uh, producer or affiliated with Disney, where you can buy like scents of Disney World and you can bring them into your home and light your candles and whatnot. <laughs> The Magic Candle Company, says my fiancé from the door, yes. I have no idea. Is, is it not called the Magic Candle no, Company? No, it's called the Magic Candle Company. It they is act, called the Magic I'm Candle Company. I'm pretty sure they're not licensed to use Disney scents, mm -hmm. even though, literally, you can figure out which scent is what based off of, like, what it's called. Maybe not allowed to. So, just like, just like, there's a, there's a food truck here in Philadelphia that has Aladdin and Jasmine on it. It's a shawarma truck, and they absolutely are not using those images with proper... <laughs> paying dues to Disney or whatnot. And maybe this person isn't either, but it's an independent developer. Disney, if you're suing somebody who makes their livelihood off of candles that just so happen to smell like your park, God, you're even farther down than I thought you were. But alas, my goodness. Oh, they still had those elements, yeah, but don't remember an Apple thing. It was like, it was during the scene where they're singing Be Our Guest, Be Our Guest, Do The Service, Do The Service, and they spray something on you. They, they pop the champagne in your face, and it smells like, According to the internet, apple cinnamon. I don't think it smells exactly like apple cinnamon, but my nose ain't strong, my, my, my tongue ain't strong. I'm not very good at parsing out those scents and whatnot, but the internet tells me it's apple cinnamon. I just think it smells like... It's a fruit. It's a fruit thing. It's, it's a, it doesn't smell like champagne. It most definitely does not smell like champagne. It also doesn't smell like champagne being shot into your face, the cork and all. I'd probably smell a little metallic and bloody because I just had a cork shot into my face. That's... That's disrespectful, Disney. Why would you do that to your guests? It was almost traumatic. Although, I went, I think the first time I went to Disney World was in 2007. I was, oh, how old was I? Uh, seven, close to seven. I was almost 15 years ago. I think that was exactly 15 years ago, right? Was that, is that how the math works out? 15, yeah, 15. So I'm 24 now. I was young. I was young. That's what it was. Yeah, we have a lock, local garage called Mickey's Garage, and the twisted grease monkey style cartoon mouse isn't okay with lawyers. <laughs> I saw uh, I was driving around Philly one time, and I definitely saw like a plumber, a plumbing company or something, a mechanics company, where it had a little not so Super Mario Mario on it, with the with the red shirt and the overalls and whatnot, the mustache. And you know what? Hey, if you can get away with it, then more power to you. I don't. I personally don't need to police you on your Mario or Sonic or Disney adaptations. Honestly, the fact that I see Mickey Mouse or something that looks like Mickey Mouse or something that looks like Super Mario out in the wild, I'm like, hey, 
I like that. You're mainstreaming my content that I that I look at. I don't have to. The world knows the mouse. The world knows the plumber, and I feel validated. So I'm okay with that. So go ahead, put Super Mario on all of your trucks. That may make me more inclined to use your business, which I suppose is kind of the point. So if it's working for you, who am I to say that you're wrong? The next cocktail ingredient that I have in this cocktail here is three quarters of an ounce of aged rum. I don't have aged rum. I have a lot of different rums. It's the most present spirit in my collection, but I don't have many aged rum. Actually, I don't have any aged rums, which confused me. I don't know if I have any aged anything up there. I don't know if that's a problem or maybe I just, I need, I don't know. I need to get some, but I got, I just grabbed the rum that I haven't used in a while. I haven't used Mount Gay in a while. Just nothing usually calls for specifically like Barbados rum or uh, so I'm just going for it this time I'm improvising this is what we got this is what we got Mount Gay has a store on the back as well Mount Gay established in 1703 Barbados rum by Eclipse handcrafted rum a legal deed dated 20th of February 1703 confirms the existence of a pot still house on our sugarcane estate in Barbados, establishing us as the world's oldest rum producer. Our name honors the pioneering Sir John Gay, who perfected the distinctive Mount Gay style. In 1910, the twin phenomena of a total solar eclipse and the passage of Halley's Comet inspired the creation of Mount Gay Eclipse, a golden amber blend of aged rums. Wait, is this eclipse? Oh! My goodness. Okay, that's great. Eclipse's perfectly balanced aromas and medium body epitomize Mount Gay's signature style of crafting and blending pot still rums. Well, would you look at that? Out of pure coincidence itself, I grabbed a blend of aged rums from my collection. So I guess I'm not exactly improvising here. Huh. Well, would you look at that? It's aged after all, my goodness. I need three quarters of an ounce of that in my cocktail shaker. It's not a shaker. It's a it's a it's a mixing glass. It's a it's a mixing glass. We're mixing things in here. I need three quarters of an ounce of that. Oh, that was perfect. Oh my god, that was like perfectly three quarters on there. I thought I was pouring a little fast. Ah, oh, no age rums, child rums, children rums, childrens, child rums, if you will. Children, child rums, children's indeed. My next cocktail ingredient that I need in here is going to be the addition of half an ounce of my Ancho Reyes chili liqueur. It's, it's got a spice to it. I don't know, I, I didn't take a very large sip of this, so I don't exactly know what other flavors are in this, but let's see, it smells, uh, it smells earthy. They say earthy, and I honestly agree that it smells earthy. I don't exactly know how to describe that, but it's not like, pungently any particular fruit it's not pungently any particular like vegetable it's just like it's there honestly if i had to describe it the first thing that comes to mind is like almost syrup like not like a not like a maple syrup but some sort of like syrupy substance maybe like a molasses or something i don't know i already read the back of this i don't think it's going to give me any more information of what it's supposed to taste like but let me i'm actually curious to see if i take a little bit more of this how it's going to taste Pull this out Try a little bit of that. What did the chili liqueur taste like? I w I've been looking forward to this for a while and I really don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I'm sure it's wonderful. Yeah, it smells uh, almost like molasses. Wowza, wow, okay, whoa. When they say spice, they were not kidding. That is spicy. That's very spicy. It's not, it doesn't stick around though. It's interesting. It is peppery. It tastes like a pepper. It kind of, I think, I think that it tastes like a pepper. A pepper mixed with a little bit of earth notes there, if that even makes any sense. But it's spicy, but it's spicy all at once. It like, it hits your tongue. It hits the back of your mouth. And it's just like, bam, you know exactly what's happening here. And then it fades to like a very deep sweetness. So like, it's almost like, it's almost like somebody stuck pepper flakes inside of molasses. And the pepper flakes hit you first. And then the molasses hit you second. That was pretty cool. That was awesome. That face took a journey. Dude, I, it's so interesting. Uh, when I first started getting into like cocktail stuff and whatnot, some people that I would watch would talk about like the evolution of a drink. And there have been bits and pieces in my life where I have found the evolution of the drink. And by evolution, they mean like it tastes like something in the, be in the beginning and then it tastes like something toward the end. It, like it goes from point A to point B or like point A to point B to point C or maybe point A to point B back to point A then to point C or anyway, it takes you on a journey. And I, I think those are the more like complex cocktails. I would call them complex. I don't know too many of those. I'm still an aspiring mixologist. So if anybody has any suggestions for like 
complex cocktails like that, I would love to do something like that. I'll, but to, I'll just say in general, like I am always, always, always happy to hear recipes from somebody else or requests from anybody else. I don't know what I might mix or whatever. Like, I mean, have I made martinis before? Sure. Have I made like margaritas before? Sure. But like weird things out there, like like what we're making here, which the name is lost on me. What was it called? Nightfall in the Desert. Like this is so incredibly interesting. This is the whole point of it all. The whole point is to be able to, to flesh it out the palate, like widen that palate and see like, oh, can I taste what's in there? If I, can I break it apart and see what's going on in this drink? And that's like the most, oh, that's the most wild wow's a part of it all, I think. Willy Wonka's full meal candy precursors. My goodness. Really though? Oh yeah, they did do that. Yeah, you took the bite of that. It's like, it's like a, I don't remember how the lines goes, but it definitely tasted like a turkey dinner and like jam or something like that at some point. And then Violet turned into a big blueberry, I'm pretty sure, right? That was, that was the same scene? Might've been. Anyway, did I put my, uh, I did not put the, the proportions in there. I need a half an ounce. <laughs> half an ounce of my chili liqueur. Put it in there. I got a little bit in there al already. So let's go for it. One half an ounce. Put it in the shaker. It's not a shaker. I'm so used to saying shaker, it's not a shaker. I'm stirring this. If I shook this now, it'd be a problem. It would get all over the place. And that's not what I'm trying to do today. I'm not trying to make a mess. Actually, this was the day where I was trying to make the least amount of mess, which just so happened to be the case because I'm not, not shaking anything. So it all just kind of worked out that way. The next thing I need is four dashes of aromatic bitters. Now, there are various different types of aromatic bitters out there, but Jeremy has decided to outline for us that when they say aromatic bitters, they mean equal parts Angostura and Peshaw's bitters. So, I got both of them. I got both of them right here. I am not a huge fan of Peshaw's, but that's just because I haven't used it too much. This is the only bottle I've ever had, and I'm not very far through it. Uh, I've gone through Angostura like nobody's business. I love this stuff. The drink is stirred, not shaken. It's not a shaker, it's a stirrer. Get it through your head, Cameron. Just make it work. In any case, I need four dashes total, so I'm just going to kind of do two dashes of each. I don't know if I have the dexterity enough to be able to do this successfully, but we're going to try it anyway. Two shakes, one one bitters in each hand. One, two. That wasn't that bad, honestly. I am very proud of it. I got a little bit of Peshoz on my finger, but that's okay. They both a little cinnamony. Uh, I'd say the era, the, um, I'd say that the Angostura is more dry and the Peshoz is more like candy, like a, like a candy candy cinnamon candy cherry and then and then uh, the angus store is like a cinnamon like cinnamon and clove like crisp christmas spices um once upon a time i thought pashod's bitters tasted like dog food um i haven't sensed that again recently so but i don't really know oh my god the bitters has a story too does this one have a story oh my god they both have stories oh my goodness i had no idea that there were stories in all these bottles apparently this happens more often than i was prepared to to go for it the story of Pichaud's Bitters. In the early 1800s, Antoine Amédée Pichaud, an apothecary, gained fame in New Orleans not for the drugs he dispensed, but for the compounding of a liquid tonic called bitters. These bitters, good for what ailed one, irrespective of malady, gave an added zest to the potions of cognac. Brandy, he deserved, served in his pharmacy. Cognac had long been a popular drink in the numerous coffee houses of New Orleans, and presently customers began demanding their brandy spiked with a dash of the marvelous Peshaud's bitters. The zest of Peshaud's bitters gives drinks and food gives drinks and food has given it the zest Peshaud's bitters gives drinks and food has given it an honored place in famous gourmet recipes the world over. My goodness, and they'd love to hear from us. Sazerac and Co. 1-866-729-3722. If you like the story on the back of the bottle, give them a call, because apparently they want to hear it. There's so many story times. I've always wondered, like, could I read a story? Could I stream just reading a book? I saw one guy do it, we never did it again. I'd listen, I don't know. The story of Angostura aromatic bitters. Hopefully I remember that I did this so that I never do this again. I don't know how much time I'm taking up by reading the back of the bottles. Oh God. For the better guarantee of pro for the better guarantee of product authenticity of this aromatic bitters, the label on every bottle bears the facsimile of the signature of Dr. JGB Seegert. There are other aromatic bitters, but only one Angostura trademarked aromatic bitters. The brand name under which Dr. JGB Seegert and his successors have sold their product throughout the world since 1830. It does not contain Angostura bark, but derives its name from the fact that it originated in the town of Angostura, Venezuela, renamed Ciudad Bolivar in 1846. 
I honestly had no idea that Angostura was a tree bark. I have learned something new today. Nor did I realize that Angostura was a, was a place in Venezuela. Angostura, restricted copyright, aromatic bitters, was first made in 1824 and may be distinguished from all other aromatic bitters by its fine flavor and aromatic odor. Produced in Port of Spain, Trinidad, WI, uh, WI stands for. By Angostura Limited from the original formula, Angostura, restricted copyright, aromatic bitters has become famous throughout the world and has received the highest recognition of at the principal international exhibitions. Because of its delightful flavor and aroma, it has become extremely popular for use in soft drinks, cocktails, and other alcoholic beverages. It also imparts an exquisite flavor to soups, salads, vegetables, gravies, fish, meat, fruit jellies, jellies, sherbets, ice cream, and all similar desserts, regulating the quantity according to taste. All right, if any of these labels sounded the most pretentious, it's 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 Angostura, by far. <laughs> Audiobooks, but with a face cam. That's basically what that streaming stuff would be if I wound up ever reading books and whatnot. I got books to read. I've spent hours playing games. Why not spend hours reading a book? I don't know. I don't really want to right now. In any case, all right. I've got uh, all the things in there, except for one last ingredient. It requires Luxardo cherry syrup. I don't have Luxardo cherries. I don't have Luxardo maraschino cherries on me. But the closest thing I do have are these uh, cherries that I picked up from the store. They are Table Joy brand maraschino, maraschino cherries with stems. And I need a half an ounce of the juice that these these gems are sitting in. And I need a half an ounce of that. So let's let's go for it. I don't think this is not this is not the first time I've heard of this, but it's the first time I've actually used it in a drink. It tastes. It smells lovely. It smell. It tastes. Oh, so lovely. <laughs> I love the taste of maraschino cherries. I love that. That is going to taste exquisite. I don't know where this drink is going, to be honest. It's got it's got the bitters in it. It's got the sweets in it. It's got the bitter from the coffee in it. It's got the spicy from the chili in it. It's kind of like... I'm expecting quite a roller coaster with whatever this drink has in store for us, but uh, we'll see. We'll see indeed. The next thing I need to do to basically finish things off around here is to give it a stir. It's stirred, not shaken. We've discussed this. According to Jeremy Moore, that's what we got. So let's go for it. Let's give it a stir. Make things all chilled up and whatnot. This glass looks pretty chilled enough, so I don't know how much I actually need to zoom there. Consumption! I will consume! Not this. What do we have on it? I have a little bit more cherry left in this glass. Actually, I'm gonna go for water this time. I'm getting parched. I'm getting parched. Oh! OMG! OMG! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Oh my god! I didn't miss it. Of course you didn't miss it. It happens. It's Wednesday. I've been trying to make these segments a little bit longer just to make sure that everybody can get in and get a little get a little piece of the cocktail. To review things so far, being that there are some latecomers, no problem. Come in whenever you want to. Take sit out. Get a drink. We've got a drink called Nightfall on the Desert. A described by Jerry Muir. This this has a little bit of a paragraph too. I'd never read the paragraph by the creator of the drink itself. A warming dinner after dinner drink for cold nights in the desert. Desert? Desert? Desert. When sunset comes early, this spirit-forward cocktail brings the spice with Ancho Reyes and Rittenhouse Rye Whiskey. I'm not using Rittenhouse. I got my own. Got Old Forester. To balance against the comforting coffee flavor of Mr. Black. The Appleton Estate 12 Year adds a little fruit and vanilla on the nose. I have, I have Mount Gay. That's my blended aged drum this time around. It's wonderful. Ugh. Oh, just made it. And, uh, yeah. I've kind of shaken things up. Shaken things up. Uh, I didn't shake it. I didn't shake it. I did not shake things. I stirred it. Does this look like shaking to you? Doesn't look like shaking to me. There's something going on up here, and it ain't, it ain't good. I haven't even started drinking the alcohol yet, and somehow I'm still messing things up. Well, that was... That was interesting. I have no idea where this drink is going. In any case, I need... I need, I need, I need, I need, I need... I need. Cocktail glass. Put it in a cocktail glass. I like that. I'm gonna put a big giant ice cube in here. Her, her, the author's instructions. Let's see if I can spin it. Yeah, I kind of spinned it. I spun it. Oh, this glass doesn't want to let me spin the ice. There's like little divots on the inside. I can't do the cool thing that I wanted to do. Ugh. Whatever. In any case, and I'm going to strain it in here. There's a little bit left of stuff in the jiggers, so I'm just going to put it in there. And give it a strain. Strain over a large ice cube. If you can spin the ice cube in your glass, more power to you. I cannot do that today. Makes me sad. In any case, that's what we got. Nightfall on the desert in a glass. But ah, you thought we were over. We're not done yet. We work on our garnish game around here. Cause I, I, I'm very bad at doing garnishes. It's not a big one, but it's all we got. 
the original cocktail provider, cocktail recipe provider, says to use an orange wedge, uh, an orange, orange wedge, orange peel. Is it a peel? What's a peel? Orange twist. It's a twist. Ah, a twist. I got you. But so the orange twist gets used here. Um, I don't have any oranges, but I do have a fruit that looks pretty orange. It does this look orange to you? It's a grapefruit. It's not an orange, but it kind of looks orange. So I'm just gonna, for all intents and purposes, our little secret is a grapefruit. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna peel a thing from here. Not too much, not too little. And I'm gonna give it a little twist. That's it. So oh, uh, what's not so fun? You tell me what doesn't seem so fun there, Disney Kwan. Oh, it smells awesome. Oh, the smell of a grapefruit. Can I have any orange? Smell this grapefruit. No, I don't want this. <laughs> That's fake orange. Oh, goodness, that made a sound. Um, it doesn't say to express the or the essence of orange. Stop spanking. Disney Kwan! Oh, we got cheers for you, Anna. This is this cheers for you. <laughs> she did, here, try this. Here, take that. Yeah, together. One, two, three. <laughs> I did it. I have work to do. I did it, I did it, I did it. Go get him, dear. You be the academic that you know you need to be for the for the benefit of our children one day. We will both be the breadwinners. We'll have, we'll have so much money to support our family with. It'll be wonderful. Yeah, I don't care about that part. As you deserve. Kids. The great the great fanfare of the Disney Queen herself. Da, 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 da. Wait, does England have cosplay contests? <laughs> this is a question for the folks across the pond. If I go to England and dress up as Anime Grill, will I get paid for it? This is the question. Or or will there be the stuff? Oh, yes, we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. They do have cosplay stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna find one in England, and we're gonna go there specifically for a convention. I made a boo boo. We should definitely go to England for a convention. I put the wrong side of the party horn in my mouth, and I almost choked myself. It doesn't work that way. That's so dumb. Oh my god, there's an entire, there's a whole ass conventions and everything for cosplay. Don't consume these. Message to the world. It's sticky, oh my god. Don't eat these. Don't, don't eat I'm these. Going to find don't do it. I, I don't think Hawaii. so. I Consumption, no, I will not do it this way. You cannot make me eat things that are not edible like that. Although, I will drink some water though. Come to Belgium with us, yeah. Mom, I'll come to Belgium with you. By the way, what's the date of those shows again? I was trying to find it on the calendar and I couldn't. Context. That's my that's my mom. This is my mother. This is my mother right here. She's awesome. And we, we do party horns for mothers. <laughs> anyway, my father is a musician. He plays with a band called Angel that's spelled A-N-G-E-L as an angel. It's, it's easily spelled. And they're actually doing a tour. And I believe they're heading over to Belgium. I have no idea how close that is geologically, uh, geographically to any of the neighboring countries. Look on my calendar. I looked on my calendar. I didn't see it on the calendar. Ugh, but in any case, we're he uh, they're heading out there and hopefully I'll be able to come along. I don't know where it is on the calendar. We'll talk, we'll talk. My people will talk to your people, Robin. We'll talk. Anyway, I was, I was in the middle of putting an orange twist on my beverage. I don't know if I need to express the oils or anything like that, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna twist it. How do you twist a twist? Just like this. Let's twist again. Like we did last summer. Come on, let's twist again. Twist the time is here. And I guess I just kind of dropped that in there. Yes, beautiful. Oh, ah, you're beautiful. Ain't she beautiful? She beautiful. Disney Kwan, Squarespace. I have no idea what that is, but I believe it, Disney Queen. I believe it. This, I believe it. I believe whatever this is. I love that I can touch chat now. Touch the link, touch the link. That's funny. I find that hilarious. In any case, this is my cocktail. I present it to you. It's not my cocktail. The recipe is not mine, but I present this to you, the people of the internet, today and forever. It's my dad's band. August. August. It's in August? Cool, that's far out. We have... Oh, God, what was the name of this drink again? Hello, Disney Juan. Hello. Hello, Disney Juan. This one was called Nightfall on the Desert by Jeremy Muir, submitted to the 2021 Coffee Cocktail Challenge sponsored by Mr. Black Liqueur. It contains one ounce of rye whiskey, three quarters of an ounce of Mr. Black Cold Brew Liqueur, three quarters of an ounce of aged rum, one and a half ounces of Ancho Reyes Chili Ancho Liqueur, four dashes of aromatic bitters, that's two dashes of Angostura, and two dashes of Pachos, and a, oh, a half a teaspoon of Luxardo Cherry Syrup. I completely misread that. This might be a little too sweet. I got it. Search my calendar for Belgium. I'll try. 
I'll try, Mom. Actually, I'm gonna do it right now. I have my phone in front of me. I'm gonna search my calendar for Belgium. I didn't even know I could search my calendar. Look at that. There's a search option there. Let's see. Belgium. Belgium. I see. Angel Belgium, August 20th. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at that. It starts on August 20th and then goes till the 22nd. I am gonna have to talk to my boss about taking off work then, because that sounds like an absolute time. Anyway, see y'all in Belgium, I suppose. It's gonna be great. This drink is stirred. It is not shaken. Garnish it with some citrus peel. It could be whatever type of citrus peel that you have. I had a grapefruit, so I went with the grapefruit. Anna's in finals that week. I'm sorry, dearest. It's just how it has to be. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out planning and whatnot. I don't think it's all bad. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. In any case, that's what we got for that cocktail there. I'm gonna take it back over here, back to the full view. Hi, everybody. Oh, mama's sad. I'm a little sad, too. So, you should do the only, the, the thing that anybody does when they're sad, and I suppose, drink a cocktail. Could go late. Could go late. We could visit the UK as well. We could help make it a whole big thing. Oh, I love this idea. I love the idea of traveling. I have always wanted to kind of, travel the world and I have traveled parts of the world before but not a significant amount of the world but alas 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 we'll get to it okay this is my cocktail this is my face this is my cocktail these are my fingers this is my upper arm these are this is this is my chest these are my headphones this is my neck this be great the actual dates haven't been set yet the UK might be added there will be more details later on, I'm sure, but thank you for all the context there. R-S. R-R-Scalf? R-Scalf? R-Scalf. That's how we're gonna do it. The nightfall on the desert smells very, very citrusy. I think that that orange peel really did a number on what they, what it, how it hits the olfactory senses. It smells, it smells lovely. I love that. Hmm. Lovely. I love the smell of that. I don't get anything other than like citrus off of that, which is interesting because the, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense because when you when you put the peel on there, it's really the oils from that that kind of come off and whatnot. Oh, how anybody would want to visit the UK, why anybody would want to, but it's just another place. It's just a place that isn't here. To put it simply, it is not here. Therefore, I want to go there. I always want to go there. Where is there? I don't know. Anywhere. I want to go there. Except at the bottom of the ocean. Actually, it'd be pretty dope to go to the bottom of the ocean, but hopefully I don't stay there. I want to go there. I don't want to stay there. Wherever it may be, I want to go there. I don't want to stay there. You never really know. All right. All right. Did I just stay there? All right. All right. For cocktail time. All right. Instantly, I get whiskey. The first thing I get is the rye from the whiskey. The next thing I get is the spice from the chili liqueur. And then the next thing I get is the Mr. Black sweetness. This, the Mr. Black sweetness combined with like the cinnamony of like the, the bitters and whatnot. This, this is pretty nice. It's not bad at all. It leaves on the mouth the coffee. The coffee is like the last thing to go, I think. But it's, it's really, really, it, I think it's very, very nice. I don't know if I would call it balanced necessarily because i can kind of i can parse out the flavors really really easily i can tell what's in there for the most part so i don't know if that's like a good thing i don't know if it's a bad thing maybe it has a hard time blending i'm not so sure but i like it it kind of tastes like coffee it kind of tastes like whiskey it kind of tastes like uh, spicy and i like that and i think that's a good thing i'm totally into that whoa rip off there's like 10 things uk er it never never heard of it oh london resort oh is there, this is all like disney stuff and whatnot i've never heard of alton towers either it's a shithole don't go to alton towers alton towers if you're hearing me say this i stand by what they said they said it, not me but i agree i'm totally held accountable for that gosh oh we gotta go we gotta go mm. i like that I'm very, very, I'm a big, I'm a big, big fan of that, to be perfectly honest. I like that. It's just interesting. I don't think I've ever had like a, I've made a cocktail before with like chili oil in it, but it was overpowering because the oil like comes up at the top. I've never had something that was spicy that kind of mixed in with the rest of the cocktail. It wasn't, not bad. It's not bad at all. My goodness. What are these prices? Manchester's also a shithole. It's like 40 bucks. 40 bucks for what? Have to go where? I'm missing all of that. I wish to waste Cameron's time and money on things only she will appreciate. Wow. 
That's okay. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. I like to waste my money too on other people. We discussed that earlier. I spend the money on other people. I'll spend a thousand bucks on the fiance, but I stutter at the idea of spending 200 on myself. It's a, uh, I don't know. There's four friends who work at AT. Dude, there's so much stuff around here. My God. Oh, I appreciate the company. I always do. I basically, I don't care how much, I don't necessarily care how much money like you have to spend to get to a place, but like can, like can, uh, oh my God, I, I lost the words. I don't care how much money it really takes to get to the place and to spend when we get there, but like can the money substantiate the experience? I haven't found a case where like, unless the experience was like downright bad, but like there's so much stuff going on with like traveling and whatnot. It can't all be bad, right? Ah. Oh. Everybody should join us. Everybody should join us. Everybody come to the... Everybody go to Belgium. Everybody go to the UK. Do you, actually, everybody do whatever you want to. Maybe we'll be in your local town or jurisdiction or country or pretty much whatever. Keep track of by... I don't know how you keep track of this stuff. I don't necessarily openly broadcast where I am at any particular moment in time, but alas. Oh, <laughs> my computer just died. LOL. I can't... I can't respond to chat stuff and whatnot. That's why I have my phone. Any case... That's pretty much all I got on this side of the show. We got, uh, we made a cocktail today. It was wonderful. I appreciate that. And it, it was, it's got some spice, it's got spice to it. It's got citrusy notes on the nose. It's got coffee. There's a little bit of coffee in there. It's actually not as coffee forward as I thought it was going to be. And the color is like a nice, I can't really, can't really super get that, but it's nice and it looks like it's got coffee in it. If you told me there's coffee in that glass, like I would totally do that. I would totally rock with you. I know exactly what you mean there. So. That's kind of that's kind of what I'm going for. I appreciate everybody for coming to cocktail time. We're gonna be switching things up and going back to the other side tonight. I'm playing a little bit of Hollow Knights. It should be fun. It should be fun and exciting. Who knows what we'll do next time in another cocktail segment? I still don't know what to call these. It's cocktails on a Wednesday. It's cocktail, and it's Wednesday. So alas, it's a nice iced tea color. I like that. The other coffee. You got your tea. You got your coffee. You got you. You put things in the glass and then you put it in your mouth. Like iced tea. Or like coffee. Or like, like, I don't know. You fill in the blank. I don't know. It's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be great. Time to suffer. Suffer with Vigi Games. Let's go for it. To everybody, I don't care where you are in the world. Maybe we'll be there. Wonderful night. Wonderful tomorrow. Wonderful time. Wonderful time indeed. Oh my goodness. I need to check what number. I changed all my keybinds around. Until we return. On the other side... Please, I beg of you, enjoy the parrots because they don't have feelings, so they can't enjoy you. So you must enjoy them. Bye. Be the course of action. I like that idea. Charm management at its finest. Oh, hi there, Shade. Hey, hey, bud. No. Oh my God. There's so many of you everywhere. Stop. 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 Don't do that. No. There's so many of you. Enough. Enough. Calm down. Cease. Desist. Move along.